Hello and welcome. My name is Chris Dale, and here we are with yet another video on how to solve the over the wire NADAS web games or war challenges. These are hacking challenges basically to prove some kind of theory or practical examples regarding vulnerabilities on web applications. Pretty awesome challenges, pretty nice. And in this challenge, we got basically a website that says that we are logged in as a regular user and we got to log in as admin to retrieve the credentials for the next level. So of course, that's our challenge. We got to become admin. Note this website is co-located with HTTP NAS 21 experimenter dot NAS labs over the wire org. Co-located, probably this means it's on the same server with different virtual hosts or vhosts. So basically based on the server header, you will hit the same IP address, but different functionality on uh, with and different applications, basically. So let's take a look at this one. And it also asks us for authentication. So let's do NATS21 and let's copy paste the password over here. And here we have, hello world. We can change example values here. For example, let's do right. And let's do green, update, and we update this little example here. And I'm gonna guess that it stores this in a PHP session. So if we visit this here again, it's basically this PHP session ID here, which controls the value. In fact, let's try this out. Let's change to one to a two. So I'm changing one to two. And uh, let's now refresh the web page. And we can see that the values have not reset. So we are storing in session and we are, we want to become admin over here, except we only have the possibilities to make changes over here. There is no functionality here whatsoever. We can take a look at the source code by pressing control U, but there is no functionality to hack into. So this is where we have our attack surface. This is where we got to try to prime our attacks. So let's take a look at what happens when we post these values. We click update. We can see that we set align, font size, BG color, submit. And from here, we can maybe try to experiment with like different types of values, maybe find a vulnerability and so on. And basically, I'm sure we can sit there for like, like at least 15 minutes trying all kinds of hacks against this website. However, the nice thing about Over the Wire is that instead of guessing and trying absolutely everything in the book, we can just view source code. And very often I'm looking at source code, I want to, I start from the bottom looking up and we can see that is writing out this little form based on, based on valid keys that are basically inside of a key array here. So we're building out a form here, but basically echoing out this, this form. And we can see further up if an array key exists called debug, we will print out the session contents. That's pretty neat. Normally we find these little flags here when we do our fussing uh, on web pages. Basically, if we do that, uh, if I use the paraminer here, this paraminer here, if I went to go ahead and do on this target here, on say not as 21 here, I'll do on the slash here, I'll do guess get parameters. I will find this little debug parameter quite, quite fast. Uh, and then we go up here, we can see that if array key exists, submit equals request. Then we're going to loop through the requests array. So that means get parameters and also post parameters as key value pairs. And we're going to set the key equals to value inside of session object. So that's basically the variability. We can build our own session array as we want. We can build up any value in here by basically putting in, for example, say here, Test equals one, two, three, four. So we're basically now posting to the script our different parameters and we add another that has no reference whatsoever. Like we, we build our own little parameter test. We post this to the application. Let's see what it says to us now. If we go to uh, debug here, you can see that we have these parameters here and then we have the test equals one, two, three, four. So that's a vulnerability in itself. I mean, now we can start to overwrite all kinds of different session parameters if there were any. However, there is nothing really much exciting to see here. The thing is we want to change this website and because they are co-located, what I'm thinking is the vulnerability might be uh, basically the co-location, the, the different V hosts 
They're different virtual hosts. They are on the same server with different applications, but they might be sharing the same session storage. That's actually quite common. I've seen it multiple times. But they're, they're storing the sessions in the same place on the hard drive, which is in most cases the PHP default configuration. That means that basically one session on one application could have effects on another application with, different, uh, with a different PHP session identifier. We don't necessarily want that, and in most cases, it's not a problem. However, when I can write any type of value in here, I can potentially write the word admin equals one, admin equals one on application number two. So on this application, I'm writing admin equals one. And right now, this will have no effect on the original application down here, because I've only modified the session identifier or the PHP session identifier on system number two here. However, if I take the PHP session identifier from application number two, so down here in the developer console, I copy paste my cookie and I set it as my cookie for the first application, all of a sudden we get the credentials to the next level. Pretty neat and pretty dangerous, I would say. In fact, in order to combat this, you want to basically for each, each virtual application, you need to specify a unique place where the session arrays or the session uh, objects should be stored here. Uh, say, let's do a Apache, PHP, different V hosts. This is how you basically do it. You set a PHP value inside of your Apache configuration, session save path, slash var, whatever a path that you want to have. So in this case here, we have two different V hosts hosted on different ports, and they have different document routes and directories, just like we had in the previous example. The only thing that has changed in this example configuration here is that they also have different session safe paths. Pretty key, pretty important. So let's see if we can get into uh, NATUS 22 then with the credentials that we were given. So we'll do that this. We will actually, we got to copy first. So I'm going to copy this password here. NAS22. And looks like we're at another application, another challenge. So stay tuned for the next video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I love reading your feedback and your comments on the videos. Those things inspire tremendously. So I hope to see you again. Bye-bye. See you soon.